Location of the condylar path is the angle formed by imaginary horizontal line at the superior head of condyle and the path the condyle will pass during the function. Usually varies from individual to individual. The anatomical differences can be about 33 degrees. Now the condylar guidance is a mandibular guidance generated by condyle and the articular disc. As I told you, this first factor of the Hanaus queen, the condylar guidance, it is a fixed factor and it cannot be modified by the dentist. Now let us try to understand the condylar guidance angle. It's an angle formed by the imaginary horizontal line at the superior head of the condyle and the path the condyle will pass during the function. If you can see the picture here, this is the imaginary horizontal line and this is the angle, the path the condyle will take while it's passing through the function like going downward and forward. This will become the condylar guidance angle. So it varies from individual to individual. So as I already told you. Now let us talk about the incisal guidance. So to understand the incisal guidance, firstly, we should know what is anterior guidance. Anterior guidance is how your anterior teeth, maxillary and mandibular, they are guiding the disarticulation of your posterior teeth on both the sides during the protrusive movement. Now how to reproduce it on the articulator that is called as the incisal guidance. So incisal guidance is the influence of contacting surfaces of the mandibular and the maxillary anterior teeth on the mandibular movement. So this is something that you can customize, you can modify as a dentist and it is customized for the patient determined by the dentist during the anterior trine appointment. It acts as a controlling path for the movement of cast in the articulator and should be set depending upon the desired overjet and overbite. These are two deciding factors for the patient. We know overjet is the horizontal overlap and overbite is the vertical overlap. If your overjet is increased, the inclination of the incisal guidance is decreased. But if your overbite is increased, the incisal inclination is going to increase. The incisal guidance actually has more influence on the posterior as compared to condylar guidance. This is because the action of incisal guidance is closer to the teeth than that of the action of condylar guidance. Let us see what is incisal guide angle. So incisal guide angle, it can be controlled when developing a balanced occlusion with a given amount of vertical overlap the incisal guidance angle can be made flatter or you can decrease the value by increasing the horizontal overlap. The incisal guidance, as I told you, it depends upon the overjet and the overbite. This angle, we can say it varies directly with the vertical overbite and inversely with the horizontal overjet. This angle is set to an average of 10 degrees in complete denture and should not exceed 20 degrees. This angle is determined by the aesthetic of the patient, phonetics, ridge relation, interalveolar distance. It means it is under your control, the control of the dentist. Now, let us see what is plane of occlusion, the definition of it. It's an imaginary surface which is related anatomically to the cranium and which theoretically touches the incisal edge of the incisors and the tips of the occluding surface of the posterior teeth. So, it is not a plane in the true sense of the world, but represents the mean curvature of the surface. Now let us see what is compensating curve. Compensating curve is defined as the AP, the anteroposterior and the lateral curvature in the alignment of the occluding surfaces and the incisal edge of the artificial teeth, which are used to develop balanced occlusion. So an important factor for establishing balanced occlusion is CC, compensating curve. And compensating curve is determined by the inclination of posterior teeth and their vertical relationship to the occlusal plane, which is modified by use of curve of speed, Wilson's curve and the monsoon curve. So these curves are associated with the natural dentition, but compensating curve is what you create on the artificial dentition to develop a balanced occlusion for a complete denture patient. If you can look at the picture here, going anterior to posterior, this is your curve of speed and going from right to left, mediolateral, that is going to be your curve of Wilson. When you combine both the curves together, the curve of Spee and curve of Wilson together, that will make a compensating curve. And when you're going to increase the arch or curve of the compensating curve, it will turn into a sphere and that is called a sphere of Monson that is going to have 4 inches radius and 8 inches diameter. Now what is cuspal angulation? It is defined as the angle made by the average slope of the cusp with the cuspal plane measured mesodistally or buccolingually. So definitely you are going to decide the artificial teeth for the patient. This is, factor is also under your control. Depending upon the restoral ridge of the patient, neuromuscular control, aesthetics, the different factors 
that will decide the type of teeth selection and the cuspal angulation. However, it is better to reduce the cuspal inclination to help reduce the horizontal forces of occlusion. One factor is cuspal angulation. Second factor is teeth with low cuspal incline that do not provide tooth contact during protrusion and the teeth with the high cuspal incline are required to obtain posterior tooth contact during the protrusion. Now, this occlusion that we talk about next is called as the lingualized occlusion. What is lingualized occlusion? This type of occlusion involves the use of larger upper palatal cusp against a wide lower central fossa. In this scheme, the buccal cusp of the upper and the lower teeth, they do not contact each other. And the cuspal incline of the mandibular teeth is relatively flat. So that will result in less lateral force and less lateral displacement during function. So that's the advantage of lingualized occlusion. But according to some studies, it is not preferred by all the patients. Only 67% of patients prefer lingualized occlusion due to superior chewing efficiency. Because of the advantage of the lingualized occlusion, 67% of patients, they prefer lingualized occlusion because they have better chewing efficiency with the lingualized occlusion. Now, let us try to understand what the indications of lingualized occlusion when the patient has high aesthetic need, weak muscle or mastication, displaceable supporting tissue, rich resorption, discrepancy in the jaw size, like for example, a very narrow upper arch or wide lower arch or implant supported over denture. Having the lingualized occlusion definitely will give better aesthetic, better penetration of the food bowlers. It is easier to adjust occlusion. It may be used in class 2, class 3 and cross bite cases too. There is more centralization of the vertical forces, minimized tipping force and potentially bilateral balanced occlusion. While the disadvantage is that it is difficult to obtain repeatable centric record, especially if there is uncoordination. Severe is resorption, then it may be more easily be handled with the monoplane occlusion. What is monoplane occlusion now? Monoplane occlusion is also called as the neutral occlusion or neutrocentric occlusion. Now let us see what is monoplane occlusion. So monoplane occlusion is the neurocentric occlusion. It's a fat occlusional plane that's set with the non-anatomic teeth. So this flat plane, the AP plane is parallel to the denture foundation area in the monoplane. There is no vertical overlap of anterior teeth. Teeth contact should occur only when the mandible is in centric relation. Opposing artificial teeth should not contact when jaws are in eccentric relation. In protrusion, there is a disclosure of the posterior teeth as a result of arrangement in single plane. There is no curve of Spee or curve of Wilson in the monoplane occlusion. So, indication of monoplane occlusion definitely is this in class 2, class 3 coases, malocclusion, cross bite, uncoordinated jaw movement, mostly for the geriatric patient which have minimal ridge, resorb ridge and more chance of fracture. Advantage monoplane occlusion, everything is flat here, so simple, technique less sensitive, less time consuming, less precise jaw relation records here and lateral force are reduced by eliminating the cuspal incline because all zero degree cuspal inclination. Simple and easy occlusional adjustment and occlusion is not logged. However, it may not be that aesthetic, poor bolus penetration, and cannot be balanced in eccentric excursive movements. Now let us see what are different types of occlusion schemes we have. First of all, we have the anatomic teeth. Anatomic teeth are normally resembling newly erupted teeth. They have the best aesthetic and they are most commonly used type of artificial teeth. Usually the normal dentition with the cuspal angulation is 33 degrees. Anatomic teeth with 30 degree cuspal angulation are also available. Advantage of anatomic teeth Definitely is aesthetic, better food penetration, vertical stress is decreased. They are more harmonious with the TMJ muscle of mastication and you have balanced occlusion in eccentric position. But the disadvantage since anatomic teeth, everything has to be more accurate. Precise technique is required, more time consuming to arrange the teeth. Difficulty teeth position in class 10 degree semi-anatomic teeth are the one which are commonly known as functional or Anatolian teeth. And they are used in cases with mild discrepancies in the jaw relation because they are more flexible to arrange than the anatomic teeth. But overall, they will be not as flexible as non-anatomic, which are zero degree teeth. So they do have good chewing efficiency, aesthetic, less lateral force. But disadvantage as compared to anatomic, they are less aesthetic, poor bolus penetration. But it cannot be balanced also in eccentric excursions. The last one we have are the cusless teeth which are zero degree flat or monoplane teeth. They have no cuspal angulation hence are very flexible to set. 
It is easy to set the non-anatomic teeth in the balanced occlusion. So cusplus teeth can be used for following occlusion scheme, the flat teeth. When there's a bilateral balance with a compensating curve, three-point balance with a balancing ramp, flat plane balance in the centric. Advantage, of course, so the patient who have poor muscular, neuromuscular coordination, like cerebral palsy patient, patient with the malvolation jaws, crossed by class 2, class 3 cases, more comfortable, flat teeth, less time required in setup. Disadvantage, use of compensatory curve may cause same damaging effect as the cuspal incline. And occlusal adjustments are more difficult to accomplish.